Good morning, I'm Edwin Keller, pastor of St. Stephen Evangelical Church, and we thank you so much for watching us on television. And if you're looking for a church home, we would love to have you in our church home. And I think you would feel welcome. And I thank you now for your time that you spend watching us. And we pray that God would bless you in every way. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you and praise you for your presence with us. We thank you for each one that is here. We pray, Father, that we would have ears to hear and hearts to receive the word that goes forth and that all things would be done to your glory. And we give you the praise and the honor and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're going to talk this morning about being steadfast. And I want to use a scripture, Colossians, the second chapter, in the fifth, beginning with the fifth verse. For I, though I be absent in the flesh, yet I, am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you have therefore received, <coughs> received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith that you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So what Paul is saying that you and I need to have trust and confidence. That's being established, to have trust and confidence in the Word of God, what it says and what it means to me. So you see... Um, it's not just hearing the word or reading the word or memorizing the word, but walking, being steadfast, unmovable, not allowing things to, to change us, you see. Um, knowing what God's will is from a life. I had a fellow walk in the door this morning and told me, he said, you know what? I said, what? He said, the devil told me to go fishing today. <laughs> but he's rooted and grounded in the word. Amen. Steadfast. You see, I mean, it's not something that we just do on Sunday morning. It is a lifestyle. It is a way that I am supposed to live every day of my life. Um, and how many of you know, the more you live it, the easier it is. The more conflict that you have from Satan, but it becomes easier for us to be established in what the Word of God says. Now, turn with me, if you would, please, to Philippians the first chapter. And the 27th verse. Only let your conversation, now this, this conversation is an old English word meaning conduct. Okay? So only let your conduct be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you, or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but for you of salvation and that of God. So you see, how many of you know when, when you stand in what the Word says, people are going to laugh at you and talk about you? I've been talked about all my life. It doesn't bother me anymore. But it bothers some of y'all, you know. Uh, but, but if we stand for what we believe, if we stand constantly 
in what the Word says, it's going to have an effect. It's going to change your lifestyle. And people are going to see something. Um, just like, for instance, when Paul and Silas was beaten and cast into prison, um, and that night there was a great earthquake and, and all the doors was open and all the chains and everything was free. And the jailer ran in thinking everybody had left and, and he started to kill himself. And Paul says, don't do that, we're all here. You know what he did? Fell down on his knees and said, what must I do to be saved? I want to be like you. This is, this is our message to the world. I want to be like you. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. You know, uh, if I get out of following Christ, don't follow me no more. You say, but I've got to come to the place to where I want people to see in me what the people saw in the disciples. You remember what he said? The people perceived that they'd been with Jesus. Uh, I, I led a fellow to the Lord one day, and his wife was a Jehovah Witness, and uh, two or three days later, she called my son, he worked for my son, and she called my son and she said, I don't know what's wrong with him. <laughs> I have never seen him like this before. He said, Daddy led him to the Lord. You're going you're gonna to see a difference Amen. when you begin to move into the things of God. You see, I mean, you've got to come to the place to where you say, I don't care what anything else looks like. I, I, I don't care if nobody else in this world. You know, um, I, I have made the statement that if somebody could prove to me that there was no heaven and no hell, I don't believe I'd change the way I lived anyway. Because it's so much better than the way I used to live. Yeah. You see, it, it's something that becomes alive in your spirit man. N not in your head, but in your spirit man. And, and when, when this happens, you begin to change. You know, I mean... You change the spirit man, but how many of you know the old body is still the same? The old mind is still thinking bad things? When I got saved, every bad thing that I had ever thought or done began to come up. Amen. And I'd push it down and pray a little bit and cover it up. And in a day or two, he would come back again. And you know what the Bible says? Jesus said, give it to me. I don't know what he wants with it. But when I began to give it to him, it didn't keep coming back up. You see, he has given us the ability to become what he wants us to be. Now, um, like I just got through saying, the body doesn't change. The old mind doesn't change. You've got to be renewed in your mind. I beseech you, Romans 12, 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, of which God expects of you. Then it says, and be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How many of you know you can't be transformed, transformed until you get this mind renewed? 
You see, don't, he says don't talk like the world and don't walk like the world and don't act like the world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And when I get that mind renewed, then things will begin to, to change in my life. I'll begin to see things differently. I'll begin to talk differently. I, I've told you all this. Um, some of you have heard it before, and a lot of you haven't. Before I got saved, I used to love to lie. <laughs> I'd tell tales that you wouldn't believe. I was in the Navy, and I'd tell people that <laughs> said he was six foot. <laughs> <laughs> Weighed 180 pounds and beat me off. And, <laughs> and people would come home and see her. <laughs> and the mouth would drop open. And she'd say, He lied to you too, didn't he? <laughs> but then when I got saved, I had told so many lies, I began to believe in myself. Anybody ever done that? So then I had to quit telling some tales. I didn't know whether they were true or not. So you see, when we come to Christ and begin to move into the things of him, things have got to change. I can't keep talking the way I used to talk. Um, of course, I've told you all this. This was before me and Sadie, before I got saved. But now, I cursed bad. But I didn't in front of women and children. I, Sadie had never heard me cuss. And we were going to Mount Pleasant one day, and we was in Cordesville, and there was two log trucks, one parked this way and one this way in the highway. So I sat there about 10 or 15 minutes, and they didn't move. So I sat down on the horn. One of the fellas stuck his arm out the window and did this. I said, how in the hell? <laughs> they said, what did you say? I said, how in the world <laughs> does he expect me to come around? She said, if somebody would have told me you cursed, I'd have told them they was lying. But you see, we change. Amen. We become transformed. We become a different person. So you see, we've got to come to the place to where if I'm going to stand steadfast in what the Word of God says, I've got to change the way I used to live. You see, um, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Let's, let's look at that right quick. Therefore, and I've told you all that any time you see what's therefore, find out what it's there for. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. So, in other words, I have become a new creature. I'm not the old stump I was years ago, even though some people still believe it. William was telling somebody, they asked him, where did you go to church? I go to E-Church. You mean with Stump Keller? But it, there's been a little bit of change. Amen. You see, so, I mean, we've got to come to the place to where when I become this new creation, old things have passed away. The things I used to do is ancient history. Yeah. I don't have a history anymore. All things have become new. So, therefore, we need to recognize 
that when I accept Jesus, things begin to happen. I have to change, not only in the spirit man, but in my knowledge of what the Word of God says. All right, then, let's look at Hebrews, the fifth chapter. Beginning with the 12th verse. For when, for the time, you ought to be teachers. You have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And I become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of God, of right of righteousness, for he's a baby. Now, what is a teacher? You say, well, I ain't no preacher and I ain't no teacher. You preach every day with this little red thing in your mouth. It ain't always exactly according to the word. But now, to be a teacher is to share things that you know. And let me say something. Some of you have been in here long enough that you know enough you need to be sharing. Amen. Well, I ain't no teacher, but you got something. If you don't have anything yet, you might as well go fishing today. <laughs> I heard somebody say amen. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, we taught, we taught our children as they were coming up. We, we taught them to the best of our ability of things that I had learned. Now, now... <laughs> Let me say something here. When they get a little bit up, they don't listen to you anymore. They get smarter than you. Amen. And you try to tell them something, I ain't doing that. I'm going to do it my way. Anybody ever experienced that? Yeah. Or am I the only one? You say, uh... <laughs> I ain't going into that. <laughs> okay. All right. You, you, all right. You share what you know. In other words, um, Robbie was in the hospital where somebody was going to be operated on. It was a young preacher there. And uh, Robbie was sharing with him some of the word, and he says, I never heard some of those things before. <laughs> you have been taught the word of God. I don't, I don't try to teach you anything but what's going to benefit you next week. Amen? Amen? I'm not a preacher, I'm a teacher. And I share with you things that I've learned through experience and through the study of the Word. So therefore, you know, I mean, you can do the same thing. Maybe not to the extent that I do, but if you hear somebody talking things that are not according to the Word, and you know what the Word says, what you need to do is say, what the Word says is this. Amen. This, this preacher was saying one day, um, God answers prayers in three ways, yes, no, and maybe. And William says, my Bible says, if you ask anything according to the will, he hears you. And if he hears you, you got what you ask. He said, 
Tell Stump I said, hey. <laughs> but that just didn't happen to William. Years ago, I was on pastor's prayer time on a radio channel. And I was supposed to be on for a week. Well, that Monday, Sadie and I had to go somewhere. And so one of the preachers, the preacher that was over the station, said, I'll take Monday for you. I said, okay. So Sadie and I were riding along, and I cut it on. And he said the same thing. Somebody called in for prayer, and he said, well, you know, God answers prayers in three ways, yes, no, and maybe. I told Sadie, I said, oh, Lord. She said, what? I said, I got to straighten that out tomorrow. That's not according to the word of God. The Bible says if you ask anything according to his word, he hears you. And if he hears you, you've already got your answer. For instance, let's go back to Daniel. The Bible said Daniel prayed, prayed for a certain thing 21 days. And the angel came to Gabriel, the archangel came to Daniel and he said, Daniel, your prayer was heard and answered the first day. What was he saying? Daniel prayed according to God's will. Your prayer was heard and answered the first day. Daniel said, well, why didn't it come to pass? Satan held it up. The enemy stopped it. That's what happens with you. And if he can get you to say, oh, well, it must have not been meant to do. God must have not wanted me to have this. He's got you. But you see, let's stay according to the word. Let's stay what the word of God says and not what man says. You can hear all kinds of things what man says, but we, we need to hear what God says because nothing else is going to make any difference. Um, and a lot of us hear things different than the rest of us hear things. Um, these three people died and went to heaven. And St. Peter was asking them, um, can you ever tell me what Easter was about? One of them said, I can. They said, what? They said, well, you have a lot of food and people come in. He said, no, that's Thanksgiving. <laughs> One said, I know, I know. He said, what is it? He said, that's when you have the tree and presents. He said, no, that's Christmas. The other one said, I know, I know. He said, okay, what is it? He said, the, tomb, the stone was rolled back from the tomb and Jesus came out. He said, right. And she said, if he sees the shadow, he goes back in for another year. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not always right. <laughs> but you see, we've got to come to the place to where we're teachers. What are teachers supposed to be doing? Sharing what they know. Laying hands on the sick. You say, well, I've never done that before. Try it. When I first started, God told me, he said, I want you to pray for people. And it seemed like, to me, a lot of them got worse and some died. And I said, God, you know. He said, I didn't tell you to heal them. I told you to pray. That's all we got to do. Lay hands on the sick. The Bible says, lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. He's given you a promise. He said, in my name, in my name you shall cast out demons. In my name you shall heal the sick. In my name you shall raise the dead. Are we steadfast in his word? Are we doing what he tells us to do? Are you sharing what you know about the word? 
You know, I mean, now don't get me wrong. I'm not condemning you. I've been there and done that. Um, the time God gave me a new heart and I went back to the doctor and, and he ran every kind of test and he said, Mr. Keller, I've done you a grave injustice. I said, how is that? He said, I told you you had a heart of an old man. You got the heart of a young man. I said, thank you, sir. I didn't witness nothing. Why? <laughs> Same reason you don't. I was embarrassed. Um, but you see, we got to begin to share what I know about the word. At my Bible study last Tuesday night, I made everybody in there tell a time when they prayed and God answered the prayer. And every one of them shared what happened with them. You see, God speaks to us. We don't always hear. We are so busy. And, and sometimes we don't know whether it's God or not. Something told me. Guess who that was? You know, uh, I, I've told you all this. It was hard for me to pay attention to what God said. I, I had the hood up on the car, and I had the car running, and I was, and something very plainly said, you're going to stick your, fan in that hand, uh, your hand in that fan. Amen. And I said, I'm not stupid. <laughs> Blam! <laughs> Wasn't long after that, it was, it, it, we have a pond at the house we were living in, and, and there was a dead pine tree on the dam, not a limb on it that had died that much. And I had a backhoe with no top on it. And I said, I'm going to ease up to it and just push it over. And something told me, said, it's going to break and fall on you. I said, I'm not going to bump it. <laughs> How many of you talk back? I eased up, and when I touched it, it broke and started falling. I said, Jesus! Not a piece hit me. From then on, I said, something told me. <laughs> you see, we've got to come to the place to where I begin to know what the Word of God says to the extent now, that's not saying that I don't still argue with God. I do. If it's something I don't want to do, I'll fuss and carry on. But I'll do it. You see, I mean, it's hard when God first begins to talk to you and, and you know it's God. But you don't want to go to somebody and say, God told me so and so and so. They're going to think, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are that God would talk to you? You are a child. You are a child of God. Whereby we cry, Father, Daddy, but you see, think about this thing. He's not some great thing up way off. The Holy Spirit is inside. The Spirit of God bears witness with my spirit that I'm a child of God. And if a child and heir, an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. So you see, I need to recognize that I'm very, very, very special to God. And it doesn't make any difference what you think about what I think, because I know 
that God loves me so much that he wants to do everything that he possibly can for me. Yeah. And we all need to feel like this. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you and praise you for your presence. We thank you that the word has gone forth, that it will not return void, and that you will perform, it will perform everything that you sent it to do. And we thank you for that. And we give you the praise and the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.